I'm going to start a new series uh, about uh, CNC machining, about the Silex 7, about the Siemens 808D controller. And this series is as much for me as perhaps down the road it will be for uh, someone else who's, who's green, who's coming to the scene uh, with uh, a limited knowledge base. Um, you know, I sort of bought this machine on faith. And I'm, I'm, as I'm progressing, I'm getting more into it, learning more, I'm discovering there's a, there are a lot of things that maybe some of the other machinists, some of the other guys that have been doing this for a long time take for granted. Um, and I get caught up on the, on, the, on the simplest things, like how do you turn it on, you know? <laughs> um, what buttons do you push? How do you do this? How do you, how do you, how do, you do that? So I'm going to compile um, a series of videos. I don't know how many videos it'll be, but I'm going to compile, um, record, and publish a series, vid series of videos of the things that I've found important, things that I've, maybe easy things that I've uh, had questions about and then discovered the answers. And I'm going to film them and try to explain them in such a way that uh, anyone can understand. I think a good starting point um, would be power. Do I need three phase power or should I go with single phase power? So let's start there. Um, in the shop that we built, um, we've got single phase, uh, 240 volt power. Um, originally, I was going to buy um, a machine with that, that only needed uh, single phase power, but the, uh, the SILE rep here in the United States convinced me that it was doable. And he provided a solution, um, which I paid for with the purchase of the mill for uh, basically um, plug and play um, three phase power. So ultimately I decided to go with, with, the, uh, with the three phase mill with the Siemens 808D controller um, so that I could enjoy I believe it's all 7.5 horsepower. So let, let's take a look at the uh, solution to gaining three phase power in the shop. This is a 15 horsepower American rotary phase converter. It plugs directly into a standard single phase 240 volt plug. Now some assembly is required they had very good instructions. I'm not an electrician, uh, but by following all of their steps, I was able to easily hook up this phase converter. Now, when I got it from Sile, it was delivered with the mill. Um, there were some other things that I needed to buy. For example, I needed to buy the cable that goes from the wall to the box. And then I needed to buy the cable that went from the phase converter through its components to the mill. I also needed to buy a 50 amp breaker that is in this box. And I, need, I also bought some conduit, this emergency disconnect switch, which you see on the left, and the plug, the standard 240 volt plug on the right. To be honest, before I sat on this for probably two months, I tried to get several electricians in here to do the job, and I'm not sure if it was because it was in the middle of COVID or, or what, but I couldn't get anyone to come and work on this. So finally, after waiting for two months, I did it myself, and it turned out to, to not be too bad. Um, I would prefer to have a licensed electrician do it, but um, I wasn't able to do that. The phase converter, as I said before, the phase converter goes to an emergency disconnect switch from, and then from there goes to a wall outlet, outlet that I wired in using uh, conduit and then into a transformer, which came with the mill. You're required to do all of the, all of the wiring from A to Z, from the, 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 the 240 in to the phase converter, from the phase converter to the breaker, to the switch, to the next plug, to a transformer, the transformer provided by Sile, and then ultimately to the mill. In the beginning, it seemed very overwhelming. Seemed, it seemed like it would be easier to just hire an electrician and have them do it. 
uh, but, but I did it myself. I just took it step by step and it worked out well. I actually made one mistake, which wasn't a big mistake, a huge mistake, but I made one mistake. After you've wired up your three phase, you get everything running. There's a, a test that you can do to make sure that you've wired your three phase in correctly. And that is to cycle on and cycle off your coolant pump and then watch the fan on the pump to see which direction it's turning. Now it's supposed to be turning in an anti-clockwise or a counterclockwise rotation. And if it's turning in the opposite direction, you only, you need to go back to the wiring on the, on the, in the mill and change any two of those three legs, the three phases that come into the mill to get it to go in the correct counterclockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Let me fire the mill up and I'll show you how that's accomplished. And at the same time, we'll see the, the steps in order to turn on the Silex 7 with the phase converter and the Siemens 808D controller. Come with me. Step one. Power on your phase converter. Step two, connect your emergency disconnect switch. Once you've moved the emergency disconnect switch to on, you've powered this transformer, which in turn, which in turn powers the mill. So I've got about 262 volts coming into this transformer and it's putting 442 volts out. That's higher than most services, but in my situation, the voltage coming into my shop is a little hot. On the back left of the Sile X7, you'll see this switch. Step three, Turn the switch clockwise to the on position. We now have power supplied to the mill and you'll notice this red button has lit up. The final step in powering up this mill will be to power up the Siemens controller by pressing the green button to the right of that red button which has been lit up. It'll take a few minutes for the mill to power on and once it has we'll go ahead and take a look at the coolant pump and I'll show you what wrong looks like. The Siemens 808D advanced controller has booted up completely. You'll notice in the upper left corner there's an error 700057 that states the pressure of gas is low at 1754. Uh, that's because uh, I, I did not turn on the air compressor prior to turning on the mill and it's just a low air error which will go away uh, once the air compressor is on. To start the coolant pump locate the button that says coolant that looks like a little drip is coming out of a faucet. faucet. Then this, is, this job is easiest with two people. Okay, One person looking at the pump and then one person cycling the pump on and off. I'll go ahead and set the camera up at the pump and cycle it on and off several times so you can see that my pump is turning in the wrong direction and I'll need to open up the back and sw swap any of the two wires to get it to, t to turn in the correct direction. Now you'll notice a little, a, a, a little light part on one of the blades up here. If you concentrate on that and as it slow downs, slows down, you'll be able to see what direction it's going. So I have a little more wiring to do, but it's a fixable problem. Um, now to turn everything off, I'm just going to go in the in the exact exact opposite order, except instead of 
hitting the green button to power on, which is now lit, I'll hit the red button on the left to power off. I'll reverse the steps, turn off the switch at the back of the mill, flip the emergency disconnect off, and turn off my rotary phase converter. I'll go ahead and do that now. Believe it or not, what we went over today were some things that, that I struggled with. Uh, they perhaps weren't uh, difficult or complex, but uh, this was a big purchase. This was important to me and I didn't want to make mistakes. Eventually, I got through. I got to where I am now. Um, in the next video, I'll go over something else that, uh, that uh, the concept seems easy enough, but I didn't know how to do it. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to back up the Siemens 808D controller, both internally and externally on a USB thumb drive. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.